Hi everybody and welcome to another digital piano review here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and in this video we're talking about Kawhi's brand new CN29 digital piano. We're going to be covering its action, its sound, all of the features you get with this instrument, its connectivity, who the perfect customer for this might be, and of course if it's your first time to the channel please do subscribe. We really appreciate the support. Also, be sure to check out the videos of the CN29 where all we do is play the instrument so you can take the sound in rather than listening to me talk away. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's get started right away. So let's talk about the sound on this CN29. Uh, of course, I can't play the CN29 without uh, referencing the CN27 because of course it's sitting right next to us, uh, but also we've been living with the CN27 for about three years. We're very used to it and I would say the CN27 represented one of the absolute best values in the entire Kawhi lineup when it came to sound production. And so with the CN29, I have very high expectations. Um, I've been in here playing it for a couple hours this morning just in, ahead of doing the review to you know, soak it in, to get really comfortable with the instrument, um, and also the advantage of being able to play it side by side with the CN27. And I have to say that there are some differences that I did not figure would be there. Um, I knew that we were coming in with a new uh, control interface. I knew that we were coming in uh, with a very slight update to the cabinet. Um, but I wasn't expecting as big a difference on the sound. And here's what I'm hearing. When I turn the CN29 all the way up to the top and I'm in their main piano sound, which is an SKEX Concert Grand, which they've uh, sampled, individual note samples, uh, by the way, really exquisitely done. Um, the Onkyo onboard processing, which the CN29 has and the CN27 didn't, is providing such a beautiful clarity and control to the wave structure that there's no woofiness in the bass. There's no um, uh, distortion um, whatsoever uh, in the bass. The speakers are Onkyo speakers, and so I'm hearing much uh, tighter sound reproduction out of those speakers. Um, and so I guess the best way to sum up on the piano sound, what I'm hearing out of the CN29, is very tight, clear, punchy sound which never really distorts in any way, no matter what volume you're playing at it. Um, and to be able to say that at an instrument that's kind of in the two, three thousand dollar price range, like the CN29 is, is remarkable. There aren't very many instruments on the market that can do that. And that just makes it more satisfying because you wind up not thinking about having to keep the volume pulled down. Um, anyone who's played uh, digital pianos a lot, you know, throughout their lifetime and certainly over the last five years knows that uh, it's kind of an unspoken rule that you never really turn the volume all the way up because the minute that you do, if you really push the keyboard, the speakers start breaking up and the speakers start disport, uh, distorting. And I can say absolutely with confidence right here, you push the CN29 all the way up to max volume, you punch that bass and it's going to sound just as clear as if you had headphones on. It's absolutely remarkable. Now, as you get into the mid-range and into the top end, what I hear uh, is, a, a, I would describe it as a, a bit more of a realistic stereo field uh, or a stereo image that you're getting uh, between the left and the right side um, as you're mixing your left and right hands. Um, on the CN27, um, and really a lot of other digital pianos, you kind of get this ham-fisted, very overly simplistic uh, stereo image, which means like, as you go down the left side, literally your ear can kind of track the sound like just moving down to the left and moving off to the right. You know that when you're in front of an acoustic piano, it's much more subtle than that and it's a lot more complicated than that, right? Because you still have sound reproduction coming from the entire soundboard. It's not just this one little pinpoint. So I feel like that's something that they've really nailed on the CN29 this time. And I probably need to credit, as again, again as we're talking about this Onkyo circuitry, 
uh, and the Onkyo uh, stereo system. Um, I've mentioned the piano sound, and of course, that's the, the SKEX uh, individual sampled notes. And Very warm, very, very uh, complex tone that they've loaded in there. So they've got the SK Concert Grand, uh, which of course is more colorful. It's definitely got a wider tonal palette uh, than anything they've ever really loaded into an instrument before. Um, and it's just great to hear it presented so beautifully through the speakers and, and through the processing. Uh, also on here, they've got the EX Concert Grand, which is an earlier version. Um, of their Concert Grand. It's a bit brighter, almost kind of reminds me of like a Yamaha CFX in terms of um, still being a very beautiful sound, but just a little bias towards the treble and a nice bright attack. And so uh, we've got that right here. Again, just to hear the contrast. So that's the SK Concert Grand and the EX. It's a quite a difference. So it's nice that you've got both to choose from when we're talking about the CN29. And then That is an upright piano patch. Quite impressed with that as well. And then one that they call Studio Grand. It's kind of a seven footer sound. Compressed and more trebly. So a really wide variety of acoustic piano sounds, and I would say that they're all really high quality, but of course the SK uh, Concert Grand is the one that's got the individual note sampling, and you can tell that it's the beefiest, it's got the most audio information uh, when you're playing it. Quite nice. Um, then it's got a, also got a collection, uh, fairly basic collection, but still quite a usable collection of electric piano sounds. Sort of a Rhodes. And I believe this is the same um, electric piano samples as you'd find on the ES8 for people who are familiar with that model. And a pretty decent B3, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, your una quarter, your left pedal, actually activates the Leslie speaker. Church organ is, <laughs> I normally wouldn't even discuss the church organ sound because it's not something that I think has a ton of application in the modern world, but there are still quite a few users out there who look for digital pianos within a worship setting um, or also just enjoy the sound of a church organ. So this is worth mentioning because we review all kinds of digital pianos on this channel. We review all the Kawais and the Rolands. Uh, and the Casios, and when we have them, uh, you know, from trade or whatever, we'll review Yamahas. Uh, and church organ sounds in this price range usually, quite frankly, are abysmally terrible, especially uh, the ones that have uh, sort of the, the full range uh, kind of pipe organ stuff. So you've got eight foots and four foots and two foots and mixtures turned on, and they always sound really distorted and fake. 
And I don't know why it's that difficult, but Kawhi actually manages to get a pretty satisfying pipe organ sound. So thanks Kawhi for that. And of course, hi harpsichord, vibraphone, strings, slow strings, all your uh, kind of your normal digital piano sounds that you'd expect to be there um, are there. So it's a nice collection. I think it's just under 20 sounds that you've got the option to use. So we've got the usual slate of, of instruments that allows you to use this as a piano, as an electric piano, um, as an organ, or just as some basic pad uh, to kind of thicken it up. And of course, you've got the playing modes like a dual, which layers two sounds on top of one another, uh, or four hands, which is really handy. That's uh, where essentially you can break the keyboard into two halves, but have both halves have the same range. This is uh, something that sometimes teachers really appreciate, so you can teach on one instrument instead of having two instruments side by side. So a few other things about the sound on the CN29. Uh, one of the coolest parts of this, if you're a piano player, is the virtual technician functionality that they have built into this. And on the 29, there are 17 different parameters that you have the ability to go in and edit. So we're talking about uh, things like uh, the touch, the damper noise, the tuning. Uh, you can have, you know, how high the lid goes. You can talk about string resonance. You can talk about the, uh, the case resonance all sorts of things and of course the best way uh, to make use of this is by connecting it to um, an iPad or an iPhone where the Kawhi Virtual Technician app um, will allow you to manipulate Virtual Technician completely. It is so cool and it's actually a lot of fun because you get, essentially get to build your own personal piano. Um, it saves to it and you never really have to edit again. Um, it just gives you one extra way in which to personalize the overall experience. Uh, with all of that Onkyo circuitry we're talking about comes a few extra little gizmos that for people who use headphones, they're really gonna appreciate this. So you get to select the type of headphone that you're using. So if you've got sort of an open back headphone versus a closed or versus an earbud, it actually changes the processing of the sound to optimize that for the type of headphone you are. That is really cool. Uh, and then on top of that, it's also got sort of like this atmospheric spatial processing going on so you can affect the sense of space that you have with the headphone. The bottom line is this, when you plug headphones into the CN29, you really start using all the features uh, that you have at your disposal. There is not much on the market that is going to beat the level of authenticity when it comes to an acoustic piano experience playing on this instrument without getting into like a $10,000 spend pretty incredible value. So let's move on to action, but before we do, we're gonna throw up all of the specs on the slide so you can check them out in writing. So thank you so much for sticking around. Action's up next. The CN29 comes equipped with the responsive Hammer Action 3. Uh, this is an update to an action design that Kawhi has been perfecting for many, many years. Um, but they've kind of reached a new pinnacle. Uh, and one of the ways, I, I think, one of the signals uh, that we see coming from the industry, we know that this is starting to be really considered the best that you can get uh, in a plastic action, is the Nord Grand just put this action into their product. Uh, which is pretty remarkable because people are saying some incredible things about that instrument uh, and of course how it feels. CN29 has exactly the same feel. Uh, so what about it makes this so great? Well, the first thing is it does have escapement. That's something that's becoming fairly commonplace in a lot of the better actions that you can get out there. Um, that's of course that little extra little kind of nubbin about two thirds of the way down where on a real piano, that would be the jack slipping off the knuckle. And of course, it's simulating it here just to increase the authenticity, because why not? It's also got a triple sensor. And so this is the kind of uh, feature that becomes really obvious for people who are using its MIDI output capability, because you can actually see in the data how accurate and how smooth um, all of the MIDI um, kind of the data figures are 
um, as you're recording into a sequencer or something like that. It's so smooth. I find the other thing that it allows you to do to have that accurate sensor is you don't really have to turn the volume up quite as much because you've got a, a wider uh, range of dynamics to play with uh, just at the control of your fingertips instead of really having to sort of set a narrow dynamic range with the volume slider and then you're just kind of playing within it. Um, it's pretty satisfying actually. keyboard. I'm going to mention the top of the key surface uh, because Roland is putting on this ivory texture. Kawhi is not put on an ivory texture but it is textured. It's kind of this micro texture. You can see it when it glints in the light uh, and that's there of course to provide a little bit of friction. It's also there to absorb a bit of extra moisture. When this first came out of the box, I found it actually to be a little bit slippery, um, but having played it now just for even a few hours, it's now feeling the way it's supposed to feel. There's some nice grip, but it's definitely not sticky in any way. And the action feels tight. So not feeling a lot of lateral motion at all. I'm not hearing any clicks whatsoever. You're not. You, there's no mechanical sounds uh, that you're getting. It's a very, very satisfying action. So again, this is um, the responsive hammer action three that's in the CN29. Such a nice uh, key touch uh, to play on. So we're going to throw up the specs for you uh, on the screen right now before we move on to features. Thanks again for sticking with us. So when we get into the features of this instrument, uh, I guess one of the reasons I consider it to be very high value is because almost all of your dollars are going towards audio processing and the quality of the amps, the speakers, uh, and kind of the core sound engine. But it's, to be honest, very light when it comes to the rest of the features. And that's either a good thing for somebody because they don't want to pay for all of that and they want most of their money going towards just the guts. Or it may be the kind of thing where somebody looks at the CN29 and goes, it doesn't do enough things for me. I need a, a higher entertainment value or uh, the, the application that I'm thinking of just requires us to have more stuff. And that of course is when you can maybe get into the CN39 uh, or an instrument such as the Roland DP603, uh, which is also kind of in and around the same kind of price range that just ups the, the number of features that are available to you. Um, but what is on here, we already made mention of this, uh, you've got forehand mode, you've got dual mode, which basically blends the keys. Of course, you've got the basics like transposition. Uh, you've got metronome, uh, which is also, uh, you know, kind of critical, especially for uh, practicing aid. Uh, you've got some internal memory to record some basic songs. I know people who use this as a practice aid as well, uh, just to hear yourself and kind of be brutally honest with what's going on or what's not going on. Uh, and then you've got um, Bluetooth MIDI in and out. You've got standard MIDI out, MIDI in and out through uh, the USB cable, and it accommodates both the uh, quarter inch jack and 3.5 mil jack uh, for your headphones. It does not have a discrete audio out. So what we're doing today is you're, you're hearing a direct line out of the headphone jack, and then that's running into an audio recorder and we're just running an auxiliary cable out of, the uh, out of the recorder into an amplifier so that I can also hear it in the room. But otherwise, uh, you don't have the ability to take a discrete audio line out. Um, in terms of the case, uh, the CN29 comes with a bench, uh, which is very handy, right in the box. So if you're uh, getting this from a dealer, uh, it really is an all-in-one package. Uh, it's got an adjustable height uh, music desk, uh, which is also great. 
And Kawhi comes, uh, offers this in three different finishes. So you can get this in a satin black. You can get it in a rosewood, which is what you're seeing right here. I really like the rosewood because it's kind of a chameleon color. It's dark enough that if it is in a room full of blacks, uh, it blends very well. But there's still some warmth to the finish. And it also comes in a mahogany, which is a lighter uh, wood tone. It's a small thing, but that desk or that sort of the, uh, the key cover on this slides out really satisfyingly smooth. Sometimes you have to fight with these things or be, they kind of rattle their way out. Um, whatever they've done on that, it's just, it's a really, really nice smooth in and out. Very last thing I'm gonna draw your attention to on the CN29 uh, is the control surface. For people who are familiar with earlier generations of uh, the Kawhi keyboards in the CN series or the KDP series, you'll know uh, that although it's very functional, it hasn't always been the prettiest control surface that they've put off to the side. The CN29 has a brand new, completely redesigned control surface, uh, and we'll make sure that we get a quick B-roll shot of it so you can see it. Uh, there's now a nice LCD screen so you can see exactly where you're navigating and what the function is that you're on. Really reduces the amount of memorizing you have to do of the shortcut keys. Um, and they've restyled the keys and, and restyled sort of the icons underneath it. It's a small thing, but it just kind of makes me feel like I'm truly in front of an instrument fit for, you know, 2020 instead of something that feels more like 2010. So uh, we're going to uh, just wrap up features and connectivity through a slide up and then we'll summarize. So just to wrap up the review on this Kawhi CN29, I really, really like the instrument. I mean, that's the bottom line. I think for people who are in the market for their first serious piano and they're looking at either digitals or maybe even uh, sort of browsing Craigslist and Kijiji for uh, used acoustics in the $500,000 or $2,000 range, um, the CN29 presents a pretty strong argument uh, for this to be the first instrument in the house. I would rather have this than a 50 year old acoustic piano with uneven keys, temperamental tuning, uh, and something that you're having to keep in you know, a particular humidity range. Uh, something where you're really never going to have exactly the same um, uh, sort of key technique um, on all 88 notes. And so that can be really frustrating for somebody who's younger and doesn't really know how to accommodate uh, a temperamental acoustic yet. This provides a totally consistent touch. The touch is completely in line with a basic acoustic piano. And now with the Onkyo processing on board, uh, you are getting an incredibly tight, uh, clear, full range, very colorful sound, even at max volume. Whereas that was just not the case on the CN27. You had to back off the volume a little bit. And now in comparison, the bass actually sounds a bit woofy. This sounds just so controlled. So great tone, really great processing. We mentioned about the headphone processing. That's a cool feature as well. You've got the convenience of the Bluetooth, but bottom line, if you're somebody who is willing and ready to sort of look at the $2,000 price range and you're considering all of your options, if your main use is gonna be playing the piano, get to see a CN29. It is gonna impress you just as much as it's impressed me. Thank you very much for watching. It's been another review here from Miriam Pianos. Uh, check out the CN29 at a showroom anywhere close to you. Of course, if you're in the Toronto area, come see us. We'd love to meet you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back for another review soon.